Hello, everyone. You're listening to the latest Flyers Talk podcast. I am Jordan Hall, and as always, I am joined by the dynamic Joe Fordyce. The Flyers are on a season-best three-game winning streak. They've outscored opponents 13-6 to six in that span, and they haven't trailed yet in a game. So probably the best stretch right now for this Flyers team. They are 8-7-1 and one overall. Uh, good stuff, I think, for their rebuild, but still plenty to look at. Uh, in terms of evaluation, Joe, what's been your biggest takeaway in this three game streak? Yeah. So who they beat is part of my biggest takeaway. Uh, they, they are playing, they play well against really good teams. And I find that to be a, a huge takeaway. Now, I mean, of course <laughs> they lose, they lost to the San Jose Sharks, but my, my biggest takeaway from the streak is Okay, so they lose to the Sharks, and everybody thinks that's this low, the low, low point of the season, and maybe it is. But then they come back and they finish the trip with three straight wins, and I don't think anybody would have said that's what's going to happen over the next three games. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the one thing is definitely that thing, things don't seem to snowball on this team. Uh, I think that's something that we've seen – a flyer team definitely last year and even in the post bubble playoffs version of the Elaine Vigneault flyers is that things snowballed. It was, they would give up a goal and then it, they would give up four. Um, and it was kind of like uh, the game, the, the I'm trying to remember which game this was when Cam York, uh, when Cam York shot the puck into the crowd, uh, which game was that? Was that the Kings? No, they were down. They were down big, but whatever game that was, when he and, got benched in the third period. Yeah, when yeah, that was um the uh the that was the Kings game I think five nothing. Okay, yeah. So when John Tortorella after that game was talking, he said, you know, we blinked our eyes and we were down four nothing. I felt like that statement could be applied to the three previous seasons for the Flyers. Hmm. You blink your eyes and you're down by this, or you're down three goals, you're down, you know, or you blink your eyes and they've lost five games in a row. Hmm. None of that stuff seems to be going on. And then there's another thing that I'm noticing. This team, they know how to front run uh, in the sense that they go up a goal and then they go up two goals, and they just continue to drive play. It's not this thing where we're going to go up a goal or up two goals, and we're going to sit back and try to hold on to that. They continue to try to score. We saw it last night. We've seen it in most of their wins this year, that they go out, and it's almost like they thrive on being up multiple goals. And I don't think that's something – I mean, last year's Flyers – being up multiple goals in any game seemed to be a feat where this year it's almost a, uh, I'm not going to say it's regular, but I mean, you, you're seeing a, at least a semi-regular occurrence of them going up multiple goals in a game and doing so against good teams. So, you know, those things are definitely standing out to me. And I, I think the ability for a young mostly young team like this one to know how to play when you're ahead, I think is a big thing because I don't feel like last year's team and a lot of the Elaine Vigneault teams knew how to play when they were ahead. Um, that might sound kind of stupid, but that's a, that's a skill in itself and, and a, a thing that a team has to learn is how to play when you're ahead and you don't play not to lose. Um, and this team plays to win. They don't play not to lose. And I feel like being ahead was such a rarity, particularly for last year's team, that when they were ahead, it was always about playing not to lose. And um, they just look totally different. The offense has been the most impressive thing to me, and it's been without sacrificing defense, really. Uh, so I think in years past, you would see the Flyers maybe get an early goal, but they would be so offensively challenged that they would have to be so defensive the rest of the way, and it'd be a tight one nothing game, 1-1 game, 2-1 game, 
real dogfight, low-scoring games. Here, they're getting offense early, and they're building on it. Uh, and when you when you give a goalie like Carter Hart or really anyone two, three nothing leads, you have the complete ability to dictate the game and make the other team feel like it has to chase and change the way it plays. So I've just been really impressed with the offense without sacrificing defense. And then uh, that, you know, the really good teams can do that. They can continually score and push the envelope offensively and still be sound defensively and not give up a ton. They, I don't think they've given up a ton. Other goalies have made some big saves, but I mean, they had Hart for only one of these three wins. They had Cal Peterson for another one, uh, and then Samuel Harrison. So they've done this streak with three different goalies. I think they're just playing the right way and producing offensively. It's nice to see some offense. That was, I think, one of the biggest storylines going into this season would be can they start to score more goals and would some of the young talent start to step up and answer more answer the bell there? And I think they're getting that, Joe. Um, Owen Tippett, really impressive. Morgan Frost putting up some points. Joe, if you can think of an offensive contributor who, who's really kind of opened your eyes during this three-game run. Well, I was actually just going to bring up Tippett because the first goal last night in particular reminds me of something the Flyers never did. Well, Last season, they never did it. Again, the, the the end of Elaine Vigneault's tenure, they never really did it. Um, but on that particular goal, you had Konechny forced to play in the neutral zone that causes the turnover. And then the puck's on three sticks and it's in the back of the net. I felt like that's always something where the Flyers would turn the puck over and it would you would hit three sticks and be in the back of their own net. And you'd be like, Whoa, wait, a, how did that happen? That first goal last night felt like what happened to the Flyers last year, and you're seeing them do it. And I am I am amazed at how the goal in the – I forget which game it was where Tippett, like, broke his scoreless drought, but it's like the floodgates open. And all of a sudden this guy is – he's shooting from everywhere. He looks like he's he's constantly has the puck in a shooting position, and he's scoring goals – like by the bushel and and there's something to being streaky um i don't i'm hoping that this is rather than streaky this is more it, it kind of flipped him back into the guy he was last year uh the the consistent scorer the guy that's always around the net and always looking for a shot and that's what it's looked like ever since he scored that goal the other night that kind of set him on this hot streak. So I would definitely say Tippett would be one, the guy that stands out to me. Four goals in his last three games. He had two in his first 13, but I think everyone could agree that he was starting to get some chances. He he was still looking active. Like he wasn't disappearing or anything. Like you saw the chances and you're like, this is going to go for him soon. Uh, yeah, well, yeah he's never been, he hasn't been invisible in any games. It's just, you were kind of like, okay, why aren't the pucks going in for him? What's, you know, and I think at the beginning of the season, and we might have even discussed it on this podcast, how when you're a guy like Tippett and you're coming off last year where the team, it was so much negativity around the team. But the one of the few positive things was you had this career breakout year. And then you come back and it's like, okay, what's he's going to, what is he going to do to follow that up? But you also have to get used to the fact that guys like Couturier and Atkinson are back in the lineup, and these are veteran offensive players. And maybe you're – you kind of have to almost reestablish your role as one of the go-to scorers because the lines at the top, in the top six are a little jumbled compared to what they were last year because of those two players being back, which is a good thing, and maybe he just – found his sort of spot in recent games. And um, he just he, – he's back to looking like the player he was last year or maybe even better. Celebrity cook Steve Martirano brings his Italian-American cooking back home to Philly. Enjoy Martirano's prime at Rivers Casino and Steve's famous meatballs with Sunday gravy, prime steaks, and more. Make reservations for Mark Tarana's Prime on Open Table. Despite the win, Joe, the Flyers did have to sacrifice playing a couple of younger players. 
uh, which is the big emphasis in their rebuild. Bobby Brink was a healthy scratch for a second straight game. And Igor Zamola got back into the lineup because they only had six healthy defensemen. And then he didn't play the entire third period after committing a delay of game penalty, penalty in the second period. And Joe, I thought this would be their biggest and toughest balance all season would be having a head coach that has a real desire to win. And really, it's an organization just with an innate competitiveness, uh, an organization that just is still always going to want to win at the end of the day. How would they balance playing prospects and developing them and thinking about the future with, you know, wanting to win that night? What did you think of Zamora sitting in the third period? And could this start to be, you know, an issue moving forward? Well, the messaging is consistent. We brought up earlier in this podcast when Cam York sat for the same thing. Um, he's not going to tolerate just the, the thing that seems to drive this coach the most crazy are mindless plays that occur in areas where you're not, it's not like you're in a crucial sort of, um, you're not being forechecked hard, or it's just a mindless error to throw the puck up over the glass. Um, we saw it with York. We see it with Zamula. And he's just not going to tolerate it. And I think in particular with the – I'm not sure if if that's um, a veteran defenseman. Let's just I'm just going to pick Mark Stahl's name because he hasn't been in the lineup because he's hurt. But if Mark Stahl does that, I'm not, I don't think Mark Stahl's sitting for the third period. I, I don't think it's a teaching moment – to teach a guy that's played that many games not to shoot the puck over the glass. I think this is about the young player and using it as an opportunity to make this young player better. This situation, the York situation. And again, I don't, I don't think it happens if it's a, I mean, when you played as many games as a guy like Stahl, uh, who I'm using as this example, I don't think benching him for the third period. I mean, Mistakes happen, and that's I think it would get sort of overlooked. Um, I think this is a, a, about it being a teaching moment. Now, the thing with John Tortorella is sometimes these teaching moments don't always they don't always trickle down as teaching moments, and that's where I think it helps to have guys like Cam Atkinson who played for Tortorella in another organization that can kind of say, listen, this is this is what he's trying to do. Um, Scott Hartnell talks about it a lot, drawing back on his experience playing for John Tortorella in Columbus, that when he does this, it means this. I think it's key for the Flyers to have a guy healthy playing every game like Cam who can come to these younger players and say, hey, when he does this, it means this. You know, because – a young player like Zamula, maybe he gets down on his whole game and Atkinson can go like, it's literally just about this moment mm -hmm. because I think it was about that moment. I don't think it was about his play overall. And I think it's good to have guys that can kind of further John Tortorella's message. Um, and a lot of times it's received differently if it comes from a teammate as opposed to the coach. My, my read on the situation was Cam York's was the benching. That game was over. That was more sit for the third period, uh, kind of learn from what for, from what you did. The Zamula situation, I think, was Tortorella really wanted to win that game. And I don't think he was, like, crazy upset about Zamula and the penalty. He, Zamula is racking up penalties, and I, but I, ju I just think that makes him not – he's not a trustworthy player at that point if he keeps committing penalties. I think Tortorella really wanted to win that game, and then he didn't have a lot of faith in keeping Zamula out there against a team like the Hurricanes that would be pushing. So that, but like again, that could have been a moment where Zamula got great experience trying to finish a game, taking some key shifts against the Hurricanes team, and trying to close the win out. Uh, so you know that's a tough balance. Again, it's because Zamula played there and maybe learned you know, from his mistake and gotten some nice shifts and helped solidify a win. Yeah. And could have been a good growing moment. So I think for the Flyers, they're going to have to evaluate this game in and game out. And maybe, yeah, sometimes they're going to have to put winning the game aside 
and maybe say, we got to take a risk with a kid here and see how he handles it. And if he makes a mistake and we lose the game, we live with it. Uh, because eventually you can't just shelter them. You can't have Zamola play 11 minutes and then not play in the third period of a tight game. Uh, Cause I'm not sure what he's benefiting from that. And listen, he has made like five penalties in the last four games. Like I don't think he's played well. I think the flyers had their best chance of winning the game without him. But eventually I think you got to put the future first and maybe let these kids learn in these moments uh, and Brank the same way. I think he sat the last two games. I was okay with the first game to get him a breather and maybe give him a rest on the second night of a back-to-back, but I don't want him sitting too long. I think he needs to play. And if he's not playing up here, then perhaps he can go down the Lehigh Valley and play. I think he should be up here. I think he's earned it, but I really don't think sitting too long is going to help them. Same thing with Zamula in game. That's just how I see it, Joe. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think the issue is this team seems to have, well, not seems, they do. They have an extra forward. And so if Brink's going to go back in the lineup, like who's not going to be there? For a while, it was Morgan Frost. Now Brink seems to be, I mean, it's only two games, so I'm not going to overreact to it. But if Brink is back in the lineup, then who's out of the lineup? And we've heard John Tortorella the games Ryan Paling hasn't played after the game, almost immediately John Tortorella brings up how they missed him being in the lineup, whether it be his skating, his veteran press. He's brought up several times that he clearly likes what Paling brings to this lineup. So if it's not Paling, then who is who is coming out of the lineup? So I think that's definitely something they need to figure out because, again, if you're going to have a young guy sitting there, they're not learning anything by sitting. They need to play, yeah. whether it's on this level or uh, – in the AHL, you need to – a guy like Brink needs to play. Um, and uh, so th- that's something they definitely have to figure out. And as far as the Zamula thing, I think um, Zamula's played some big minutes earlier this year, and he'll play some later, I'm sure. So maybe um, the, the recent penalties is – he felt like maybe this was his opportunity to have a teaching moment for a young player. But again, like you said, you want him to have moments like if he would have played as part of closing out that win last night to draw back on later in the year, next year, whatever the case may be. You want to have those. Remember that game when we locked it down, you know, down the stretch type moments. Um, So it's a fine line to walk. I agree. And I don't envy the decisions at Ford. I mean, they have some good decisions, Joe, as you mentioned at Ford. And in fairness to Ryan Paling, he's he's 24, he's young, and he could be a part of the future, and he's played well. I mean, he had his best game of the season last night against Carolina. He scored his first goal, won 13 of 18 faceoffs, played a season high in minutes. He blocked shots late in the game. He looked very, very effective. So, you know, these are tough decisions. They're – it, it's kind of been a rotation of young players that are coming out, which tells you it's it's not just an easy decision to sit a vet or something. It's they're, they're kind of rotating young guys, and it's you know they're having to fight. We're like, okay, we're sitting a young player here, but we're getting a young player, and it's definitely not easy. Uh, but definitely don't think Brent should be sitting too long either. Yeah, no, and and you know it's interesting how when you hear John Tortorella talk about Ryan Paling, you would never think this is a 24 year old player. You would think it's a 35 year old player, the way he talks about him. Mm -hmm. Um, So there is that too, that Paling, this could, this is not, this couldn't be more than just a, a a year type of thing for him um, because of his age. And um, you get the sense that John Tortorella really likes him. And um, he could be a valuable piece. Uh, brings a lot to the table. And as we know, anybody that's blocking shots late in games is going to be uh, a favorite of this coach. Yeah, absolutely. And the Flyers blocked a lot of them. They had 30 block shots against Carolina. So putting up some and offense. they had plenty of block shots in the game um, in, in their, all the recent games. Yeah. They, they've seemed to that, – that's – you know, we we joked about it on the post game show, and Scott always brings it up about mm-hmm. every game at the end of the game. Tortorella is going to bring up the block shots. Yeah, it's it's one of his things, 
And, um, you know, we see these drastic numbers in attempted shots that are in the opponent's favor, but they block so many of them that they don't get to the net. And the Flyers end up about shooting teams um, because of the amount of block shots they get. And that's clearly the imp- the impact and sort of the the um, the message of this coach is that that's a big thing for him. Definitely a sign of buy-in, and it's definitely a sign of protecting leads. I think that's what happens when you're when you have leads and you're protecting it late. You're typically blocking shots uh, because the other team's pushing, and uh, if you're blocking shots, that means you're probably doing some good things before to to put yourself in position to do that late in the game. Right. And the other thing, I mean, it is, um, I will say it's admirable because it's not the most attractive thing for a player to be told to just go out there and eat pucks all night. Um, But these guys have all bought in and I mean, at least so far. And really, I mean, young players, you should be doing, you know, this is what your coach wants you to do. This is how you get noticed by your coach. And clearly a lot of the guys on this team have taken note that that's what this coach notices. And Joe, I love the Flyers next game because they're playing their best hockey of the season and they face the defending champs at home. I think it's a really cool matchup, a a good test for them. We talk so much about barometers and all those cliches, but I think this is a really good challenge for them at home to maybe um, win some fans over, uh, to, to push the winning streak higher and to maybe convince some fans that they're, they're making steps in the right direction. So, Joe, I know you guys will have coverage pregame live at 12.30 p.m. Eastern time on NBC Sports Philadelphia. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we we should have a special guest in studio. Cool. A, uh, um, of the uh, four-legged variety. And, okay. Uh, also, um, it is Star Wars um, Day at the Wells Fargo Center, and we should have a, a special feature on that as well. Awesome stuff. I'll be sure to be uh, watching, and I hope everyone else does as well, 1230 on NBC Sports Philadelphia. Joe Fortes, thanks to you so much as always. Great to see you. Great to chat with you. A big thank you to Ben Barry, our podcast producer and guru, and Flyers fans. As always, thank you so much for listening to the latest Flyers Talk podcast. Wherever you get your podcast, please rate and listen, and we can't wait to talk to you next time. 